Behind me is the ancient stone city of Tashkagal. Tashkagal was founded 2,200 years ago and was the capital of one of the ancient 36 kingdoms. It is ethnically Tajik, which is no surprise given that we are a mere stone's throw from the modern day Tajikistan border just over there, the Afghan border just there, and the Pakistan border just down there. You can also imagine by its geography that through most of its history, this was an incredibly important town on the ancient Silk Road. It was the last town leaving China and the first town entering China. But nowadays, as the Silk Road has gone, you might think that Tashkagol is a backwater. And at the moment, it kind of is. It's in the region, a population of about 500,000 people, which in Australian terms would be a village of about four. But that's not to say the future for Tashkagol looks bleak. In fact, quite the opposite. The government of China has a one bridge, one road policy. It is one new sea road linking new and vital markets in a new seaborne silk road, including India and Pakistan, Southeast Asia, and in fact, many of the countries that have signed up to the new Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Unfortunately, Australia hasn't yet signed up to the one bridge, one road policy, which might be problematic for future generations and leave Australia more of a backwater than Tashkagol. The one bridge is a land bridge linking all the former uh, Silk Road countries and one or two in East Africa. This one bridge, one road policy was announced by President Xi in 2013. And so far they are planning multi-trillion, not multi-billion, multi-trillion dollar infrastructure investments shared by the one bridge, one road uh, countries. And you see new economic development happening right through Central Asia and an enormous amount of infrastructure being built in China to meet the one bridge, one road policy. Now, China is not doing this in an ad hoc way. They are in a very careful and well thought out way looking at options for future trade routes like the old North Silk Road and the old South Silk Road, there are very many roads, rail and gas pipelines that China are building. Just recently, China opened the new Beijing to Afghanistan Railroad with the Beijing to Karachi Railroad in Pakistan well under planning and indeed well under construction. There are new air routes that are coming in. New cargo routes have just opened up from Islamabad to Kashgar, for example. And what under President Xi's leadership, the Chinese government want to do is not just control all the sea routes, but all the road, rail and gas pipelines for most of the most important future trade. So next time you read in the newspapers something about China's policy in the South China Sea, think about that. And think about also the amazing geography that all the new Silk Road will go through, matching the amazing geography that the old Silk Road went through. So maybe I can conclude my video to China with that thought about the future. China, the country combined with India that had 87% of the global economy in the year 1500 and less than 10% of the global economy in the year 1950 is rising to the second most powerful economy in the world and will soon not rise to the most dominant, but return to the most dominant country in the world. And if you can't see the writing on the wall and plan for the future education of your children and position your country in a place which will be accepted as a trade and political partner for the new rising dominance, then you'll condemn your future to that. Or you can take the opportunity to be one of the critical countries in the new Silk Road.